introduction to weight gain on metabolic consequences. Here are my conflict of interest disclosure. When considering body fat amount on repartition in person living with HIV, there are big evolution related to evolution of art. Before 2000, lipoatrophic phenotypes were common, linked to the use of stavudine or zidovudine. These drugs were replaced by protease inhibitors, which were associated mainly with trunkal fat accumulation and increased cardiometabolic risk. More recently, use of integral inhibitors on TAF was shown to result in a global fat gain in some persons only, and importantly, HIV present within adipose tissue is central regarding fat accumulation. Indeed, adipose tissue is an HIV reservoir. CD4 and macrophages are infected and could release viral protein resulting in fibrosis, altered adipogenesis, and local immune dysfunction. Several studies compared persons living with HIV with spurt control. Here you can see that both in men and women, persons living with HIV have lower BMI than those not living with HIV but that BMI increased with age in all cases and that there was a truncal fat redistribution as shown by the stabilization of the hip circumference while waist circumference on the waist to hip ratio increased with age. In half naive person living with HIV, initiation with an insti, mainly dolutegravir and bictegravir, was associated with larger weight gain than with other third agents. The weight gaining effect of cabotegravir and dolutegravir was found to be similar in the FLARE study. And regarding the backbone, TAF was associated with higher weight gain than TF. Importantly, in these studies, weight gain was highly linked to CD4 recovery and also to viral load decrease, indicating a major effect of the return to health process. This is further shown in the INRS CO4 study of art initiators. The weight gain was modest in those presenting early and treat early, even if instant TAF had a small additional effect of about one kilo after two years. By contrast, in those presenting late with low CD4 or AIDS, the weight gain was important up to 10 kilo after two years, and the effect of raltegravir on TAF was larger, about three kilo after two years. In all cases, most of the of the weight gain occurred during the first year. In the situation of a switch to an INST in art controlled patients, as reported in the Reprief study, INST use was associated with higher BMI, higher waist circumference, and increased prevalence of obesity. Otherwise, switch from TDF to TAP was associated with a transient increased weight of weight gain during the first year, as observed in the opera cohort, leading to a 2 to 3 kilo of gain. In this slide from Esteban, all the risk factors for weight change in person living with HIV are indicated. In naive patients, the return to health process is playing a leading role in those with late presentation low CD4, high viral load, and low BMI. In addition, INSTI and TAF are favoring weight gain, while efavirance and TDF are limiting it. In addition, personal and lifestyle factors are also involved. Women, black race, increasing age, and uh, otherwise genetics, diet, and exercise, sedentarity, are well-known factors that can favor either weight gain or weight loss. So what could be the potential mechanism which could explain this effect? 
the reproductive hormonal and menopausal status could be involved. In addition, in an interesting study from Christine Erlandson, some, some mitochondrial DNA haplogroups, which distribution differs with regard to race, are associated with a different sensitivity to weight gain in those receiving in steer tough, and this could explain an effect linked both to genetics, to waste, and also to mitochondrial dysfunction. In addition, some studies have found that there is a decreased immune activation and an improved gut microbiota in those treated with INSTI. At the central brain level, food intake was found to be unchanged with INSTI use, but sleep disorders are known to be associated with weight gain. And so, what about adipose tissue? Our group evaluated three models, samples issued from persons undergoing pediatric surgery, macaque, and in vitro adipocytes. We have found that in addition to the deleterious impact of HIV proteins, the INST were able to induce adipose tissue fibrosis, hypertrophy, and dysfunction. To go further, we evaluated the beijing capacity of adipose tissue. Indeed, in our body, we have different kinds of fat, mainly white fat, subcutaneous and visceral, a small amount of brown fat, but also beige fat, which is fa formed from white fat under cold exposure or beta-adrenergic stimulation, and expresses UCP1, an uncoupling protein, which leads to burns for lipids, dissipate energy as thermogenesis, and fight against obesity. In a very recent study, it had been shown that dolutegravir was able to increase fat mass and reduce thermogenesis in mice. And we further deciphered this mechanism. Dolutegravir and bictegravir induced adipose tissue hypertrophy, resulting in hypoxia, increased fibrosis, and decreased beijing capacity. And this inhibition of beijing by a positive feedback with even enhanced adipose tissue hypertrophy. Importantly, we observed that inhibition of hypoxia resulted in reduced fibrosis and increased adipose beijing capacity, suggesting that the effect of INSTI could be reversible. Does INSTI have a marked effect on adipose tissue? Regarding TAF, increased oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction have been reported, and weight gain can also result from traditional risk factors, diet, sedentarity, use of psychotropic drugs of corticoids, stopping tobacco, or lockdown. When considering the cardiometabolic risk linked to INSTI and TAF use, it is too early to evaluate a potential risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Regarding dyslipidemia in art naive and art experienced person living with HIV in the response study, INSTI use was associated with a better lipid profile than protease inhibitors, while an NRTI, mainly Wilpivirin, were associated with a better profile. In a situation of a switch from TDF to TAF, increased level of LDL and triglyceride, but also increased level of HDL are recorded, and the cholesterol to HDL ratio remains unchanged. There are still no data on the occurrence of cardiovascular events. Regarding diabetes, in two large studies of art naive persons living with HIV, the risk of diabetes was lower with INSTI use than with PI use, and even lower when accounting for, fat, for weight gain. In switch situation, dysglycemia in women switched to an INSTI was only observed in those gaining more than 5% weight, stressing again for an effect associated with weight gain. 
And regarding insulin resistance, the situation is unclear with discordant results reported in different studies. Finally, evaluation of liver steatosis with capped measure by transient elastography indicated that INSTI did not modify the level of steatosis. In conclusion, some INSTI, mainly dolutegravir and bictegravir, but also altegravir and TAF, are associated with a global fat gain occurring mainly during the first year. Only a minority of persons living with HIV have a marked fat gain. The weight gaining effect of INSI and TAF is accentuated in those initiated with heart late, in addition to the return to health process. The risk factors are numerous, only some of them are known. In addition, gaining weight could result from causes outside art, stopping tobacco, taking corticoid or antipsychotics, lockdown, and lifestyle modifications. Regarding the cardiometabolic consequences, there is no indication of increased atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk up to now. There is no indication of an increased risk of diabetes outside the risk linked to increased BMI. And there is an improvement of lipid profile with INSTI versus protease inhibitors. And there are modifications with TAP versus TDF. Finally, the reversibility of fat gain remains uncertain. And I want to thank our team members for their involvement into this field, also to announce the next long-term complication meeting. I thank you for your attention.